Lenalita Maita is uh, becoming a standard of care after transplant for young newly diagnosed myeloma patients because uh, lenalidomide has demonstrated to duplicate uh, the progression-free survival in these patients. And in addition, in a large meta-analysis recently conducted uh, in two phase three randomized trials, lenalidomide as maintenance demonstrated uh, to prolong the, also the overall survival. In the non-transplant eligible myeloma patients, lenalidomide and dexamethasone as continuous therapy is uh, one of the standards of care. And I would say that tomorrow, probably, lenalidomide and dexamethasone as continuous therapy will be a backbone to which other novel agents are going to be added. But uh, my answer is definitely yes, and lenalidomide is becoming a standard of care in both transplant and non-transplant eligible myeloma patients. The concept of maintenance therapy has increasingly taken a foothold in myeloma, and we have multiple studies showing that lenalidomide maintenance after stem cell transplant clearly improves outcome. And there was a recent meta-analysis which clearly showed that there's an improvement in the overall survival when patients got lenalidomide maintenance after stem cell transplant, and that has become the standard of care in the post-transplant setting. Obviously, a lot more work needs to be done to define how long the maintenance needs to be continued and whether we can build upon the maintenance strategy by adding more drugs to the lenalidomide. Now, we also know from some of the European studies that botasomib maintenance is also a reasonable approach uh, and has shown some benefit uh, in the, in the high-risk patients in particular. This is important because the subgroup of patients who did not benefit from lenalidomide maintenance are patients with high-risk myeloma. So clearly we need to do something different for patients with high-risk myeloma and the answer might be a proteasome inhibitor-based maintenance therapy in those patients. Now, in the non-transplant setting, it's a little bit more um, open question. Now, we know that from the first trial, which used lenalidomide continuously till disease progression compared to 18 months of lenalidomide dexamethasone, there was an improvement in the progression-free survival, but no distinct improvement in the overall survival um, when you compare the indefinite versus 18 months of lenalidomide. Now, there have been some uh, meta-analysis of European trials which suggested that a continuous therapy is better than a fixed duration therapy. However, I think in the non-transplant setting, we still need more information to say a continuous therapy is better than stop and go, um, uh, as, you know, treat as the disease comes back versus just continue the treatment. Lenalidomide can be considered one of the standards of care to be used as maintenance in transplant eligible myeloma patients. However, lenalidomide is effective in most of the different subgroup of patients with some exceptions. And for example, patients with ISS3 or patients with high risk cytogenetic abnormalities do not benefit of lenalidomide as maintenance. In addition, uh, we are going to have uh, results of uh, phase three randomized trials in which uh, other novel agents are being evaluated in this setting. Proteasome inhibitors like ixazomib of oral administration is being evaluated in a couple of phase three randomized trials. And uh, I can envision that uh, in the future, probably the combination of the oral proteasome inhibitor plus uh, lenalidomide as in monomodulatory drug can be of great benefit for patients after transplant to be used as maintenance therapy. Uh, in the maintenance setting, the key aspect um, of the drug to be used is that it should be convenient. So, um, it's, so preferably it has to be an oral drug so that patients don't have to come back to the clinic every so often. Because the whole concept of getting patients to a transplant is, and getting the disease into a deep response is to get patients back to a normal lifestyle. So if they have to keep coming back to the clinic every week or every other week, then it doesn't serve the purpose. So I think one of the important thing is to be able to use oral medications, or if you have to use an IV medications, use that in a very less frequent fashion, maybe once a month. So lenalidomide in that, um, from that sense is a, is a good drug because it's a pill, patients can take it at home. Um, one of the disadvantages with bortezomib uh, is that patients will have to come back once every other week at least based on the studies that have been done in terms of uh, a maintenance approach. Now one good thing is we do have exazomib that is currently going through clinical trials in the maintenance setting. 
we know it is effective. Um, we have, it has been studied both alone and in combination with lenalidomide in newly diagnosed patients as well as relapsed patients and it is an effective drug. Um, now in the maintenance setting, it would be an ideal drug because it's, it's an oral drug again. Um, we know from the newly diagnosed studies that it can be given continuously over a long period of time uh, without any cumulative toxicity. So that makes it again um, an, a drug that is amenable to maintenance uh, setting. Obviously the, we need the data and there's a phase three trial that has completed approval which hopefully will give us more information on that. The monoclonal antibodies certainly is another option, especially we know that the daratumumab can be given once a month uh, on a long term basis with very little uh, cumulative toxicity. So that's another drug which potentially could have a role in the maintenance setting and obviously we need data.